Welcome to the Get Fit Guys, quick and dirty tips to slim down and shape up. My name is Ben Greenfield. I'm the Get Fit Guy. And in today's episode, you're going to learn exactly what you can do about the dreaded Freshman 15. You know it exists, and you might fear it, the freshman 15. Interestingly, an Ohio State University study showed that the average college student doesn't actually fatten up to the feared 15, but really only gains about 2 to 3 pounds in their first year. But whether it's 2 or 3 pounds or 15 pounds, you might wonder how you can stop that freshman 15 from beginning to creep up in the first place and how you can get rid of it in case it actually has become a part of your waistline. So keep listening to find out more. First of all, why does the freshman 15 occur? Well, number one would be that you flunk your food options. College campuses are notorious for poor and inexpensive cafeteria foods, and college towns are pretty much riddled with fast food restaurants, low-quality grocery stores, and venues offering unhealthy eats, nachos, deep-fried, you name it. Cheap and processed foods like hot dogs, peanut butter, fatty steaks, energy drinks, frozen meals, and top ramen, the common staples in a student's dorm fridge or pantry, compounds these matters even further. Not that fatty steaks are wrong, but if they are a non-organic fatty steak, they're not doing you any favors. And for many students, because of hectic class schedules, late-night study sessions, and the many opportunities to parte. The diet becomes irregular, meals get skipped, and food prep becomes the last thing you think about, if you even think about it at all. And because of this, the majority of meals get eaten from either A, unhealthy cafeteria foods, or B, from highly processed foods in packages and containers, usually passed through a couple of windows. And since these are cheap and convenient foods, they're also cheaply and conveniently pumped, full of copious amounts of calorie-dense fats and blood sugar-spiking low-quality ingredients. Ingredients. Plus, they're relatively nutrient void. Pile that combination in your belly and you're on the fast track to a fatter belly. Now, dining halls and cafeterias are the biggest culprits here as they provide a huge variety and endless options of colorful, appetizing foods very high in calories like pizza, french fries, ice cream, sweetened cakes, fruity yogurts, and much more. When exposed to these fast food sources on campus, your brain is pretty much hardwired to be far more likely to choose these options over healthier options and indeed. One study at Cornell University showed that 20% of the weight gained by test subjects was due to the fact that the students were eating at all you can eat campus cafeterias and dining halls. Now, reason number two uh, for the freshman 15 is stress. And stressful situations trigger your sympathetic nervous system's fight or flight reaction that can cause surges of hormones like insulin and cortisol, both of which can keep you from mobilizing fatty acids for fuel and also mobilize sugar from your liver. That combo leads to energy fluctuations, weight gain, appetite surges, fat storage, and resistance to fat loss. And when you get thrown into a new living and learning environment with unfamiliar surroundings and uncomfortable bed, different friends, late night, and a high study workload, your body responds by churning out often even more stress hormones. And one study showed a direct relationship between eating late at night and stress levels in college students, showing that students that had higher levels of stress were more likely to get weight gain due to their inability to adapt. That study also showed that students who were not able to deal with stress were more likely to turn to late night eating to relieve their stress. Now, problem number three is alcohol. Alcohol, like cafeteria food and fast food, is high in calories and low in nutrients, and I probably don't need to tell you that, but not only can a single night of partying lead to several thousand excess calories, but the hormonal response to alcohol can cause a decrease in fat-burning hormones like testosterone and an increase in those fat storage hormones I mentioned, like cortisol. In this type of situation, excess fats tend to accumulate around the waist, creating the unhealthy and undesirable muffin top effect. And then finally, there's the issue with not sleeping enough. In a sleep-deprived body, appetite-stimulating hormones like ghrelin can run rampant, while appetite-stabilizing hormones like leptin are far less active. In addition, dopamine and serotonin levels can drop, and the body develops a lower reward response to food. This means you feel less full after eating and have a higher propensity to snack especially on the wrong foods, and especially if those foods are frequently available and in front of you. And that's the problem with cafeterias and dining halls. Not only do they usually remain open 24 hours a day, but they're lined with low-quality, calorie-dense, and processed foods, just calling out to beckon your sleep-deprived attention. Okay, so what can we do about the freshman 15? 
First is to ace exercise. And no, I'm not saying you should skip classes to hit the gym, but you need to hack that student lifestyle to simulate, say, a hunter-gatherer lifestyle as much as possible. Think about strategies like replacing a traditional desk with a standing workstation or a treadmill desk. Install a pull-up bar in the door of your dorm room. Keep something heavy in your dorm room or study area, like a sandbag or barbell that you can lift every now and again. Never sit for longer than an hour without getting up and doing jumping jacks, bodyweight squats, or some hip-opening stretches and leg swings. And After all, research has shown that when it comes to health and longevity, it doesn't matter how hard you exercise at the end of the day or the beginning of the day if you spend the rest of your day in a seated position. So think about how you can adjust your daily routine so your body is constantly active. Single out the days and times you have a bit of free time and instead of, say, hitting Facebook or Snapchat, book it around campus. The state of being svelte requires some sort of stride, so try to walk, jog, run, or bike to class as much as possible. And instead of hitting the sofa to chill with friends, form a running group or join an existing group. If you have formulas or languages to memorize, walk and review note cards. Find an active study buddy to hold you accountable to not falling prey to weight gain. You get the idea. Move. And next is to be healthy. And rather than completely reinventing the wheel, I'd recommend you go listen to my fellow Quick and Dirty Tips podcaster, The Nutrition Divas, Healthy Eating Tips for College Kids, and more Healthy Eating Tips for College Kids. I'll link to both of those in the show notes if you go to quickanddirtytips.com and look for this episode, episode number 302. Both these articles give you everything you need to know to make the right choices at the cafeteria and on a budget. And in addition to these tips, avoid drinking high amounts of caffeine or energy drinks unless absolutely necessary, like during a series of all-nighters on finals week. And even then, choose brands low in sugars like plain black coffee or energy drinks flavored with stevia instead of sugar or sucralose or acesulfamy potassium. If you're already out of college and you have the budget to be able to eat healthy and you want to get rid of the freshman 15, try rebooting your body. Take a couple months to cut down on those college staples like processed food from packages, starches and refined sugars, alcohol and caffeine, and instead eat varieties and copious amounts of fresh organic vegetables. Throw in some seeds, nuts, organic meats, and even limited amounts of fresh or frozen organic and unsweetened fruit. Next, manage stress. During classes, practice deep breathing through your nose and then breathe out through slightly pursed lips. When you feel overloaded with homework, try breaking it down into small, achievable portions. And when you experience stressful social situations, try venting to a friend or in a personal journal. If you're living a high-stress post-collegiate life, you may actually have the time to add a weekly or bi-weekly yoga class. Other strategies that can be helpful for stress are meditation, gratitude journaling, adequate sleep, and even walking in nature, especially in the type of picturesque forested and green areas that you can conveniently find, believe it or not, on many college campuses. And then finally, sleep more. Be sure to check out the House Call Doctors episode on getting better sleep, and I'll link to that in the show notes, or go to my website, bengreenfieldfitness.com, and do a search there for sleep, as I has I have oodles and oodles, hours of podcasts on sleep. And while you'll almost never have ideal sleep patterns during a busy school life, take advantage of the days that are lighter to catch up on sleep or to get an extra nap in and avoid partying for multiple days in a row when you can. Try to get exposed to large amounts of sunlight in the morning and then at night when you're studying, try to limit exposure to artificial light sources. Use blue light blocking glasses or even software you can install on your computer to limit the amount of blue light from the screen, like a flux or another one called Iris. Follow these tips and you'll be far less likely to fall prey to the freshman 15. And in doing so, you'll feel better about yourself, your choices, and your college experience. And you might even become that fit, sexy student you never thought you could be. In the meantime, if you have questions, comments, or feedback about how to avoid or how to lose the freshman 15, then head over to facebook.com slash getfitguy. And when you go to facebook.com slash getfitguy, there are plenty of conversations over there that you can join in on. And until next time, I'm Ben Greenfield, the Get Fit Guy, asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. Go get fit.